everybody, Wayne here. In today's Let's Play, I'm going to do a playthrough of a solitaire one-off adventure from Warfighter Fantasy, designed by Dan Verson and published by DVG. I'm going to use the new adventure manual rules during my playthrough. I'm going to cover my party, explain the equipment, the spells, the powers I have. Uh, I'm going to explain the adventure I'm going on, and I'll give a quick overview of how the game works. So let's go down to the table for all of that. All right, so I have my party of heroes and I have the adventure all set up. Um, let's run through a quick overview of it before we dive into the playthrough. Um, it's not gonna be a super in-depth overview because the playthrough itself, I'll explain everything as I go. So it is a one-off adventure of Warfighter Fantasy. Um, I'm playing through the Dan Book, Dan Brook, excuse me, adventure, going into the Dan Brook Crips. I do have the campaign sheet um, out on the board here just so that it covers up kind of, there's a bunch of text there. It's not very thematic, so I went ahead and put the campaign board out, but really it's just going to be a one-off adventure. So we are in the world of Plumeria, and Danbrook is right over here. Um, you can see that it's white on the campaign board. That shows that it is a considered a nuisance, so the um, easiest or the lowest level, I should say, town and adventure in the game. I have a party of four heroes here. I have one player hero. Uh, Eleanor, the human wizard. A player hero has a hand of action cards, which I've already drawn and placed in the bottom here below the uh, tactical display. I also have a first, and they're all first level, by the way. I have Colin, the human fighter. He is a team hero, which means he needs to have equipment bought for him, but he does not have a hand of action cards. Again, only the player hero, which I only have Eleanor. When I play solitaire, I find that having one player hero and one hand of cards kind of is the sweet spot for me of managing that. Um, after that, we have Herka, the human cleric. She is a non-player hero. She does come with some equipment and a divine power, minor heal. And then finally, we have Whisper. He is a squad hero, and he is our human thief. So we have a nice little party makeup. Um, you know, we have a fighter, we have a cleric, we have a wizard, we have a thief. Hopefully, we have everything covered. Um, I'll fit it everybody with everything they're supposed to have. So Whisper, he's carrying some torches, which will reduce the entrance costs to the rooms in the dungeon. Herka, as a cleric, she has divine abilities. Well, one ability because she is only a non-player hero. She doesn't get to pick from all the ones that are available. She just has whatever's assigned on her card, which for her is minor heal. Um, but that one will definitely come in handy later on. She also does have access because her uh, deity is Odin. She has access to Odin the Wise. Um, his a couple special abilities that he has. We'll see them come into play during the adventure. Colin as the fighter here. He has a toughness of one. The toughness lets him avoid taking a wound. Um, other than that, I had to buy everything for him. So I have an old longsword and an old chainmail armor. And Eleanor, my human wizard, as my player hero. She has a bunch of different abilities. Um, some kind of some more options. The fire hands and minor deflect. Those are two spells of hers. Those were given to her. Those are on her card. Enough to purchase any more. Um, after spending, so for the Danbro Danbrook Crips adventure, it is, I have 38 resource points. After spending resource points on the four heroes and then their equipment, um, I technically went over by a couple, I think. I don't care. It's my game. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, so two things. One, like I said, I went over a little bit on the kind of the resource points because what you do is you pick your heroes, right? With the resource point cost in the top right, you're going to then assign them whatever's written on their card. You're then going to spend resource points on any abilities. And then after that, you're going to convert your resource points to gold, silver, and copper coins, which you're going to then spend that money to purchase equipment. I did two things. One, I went over, I think like a couple of resource points. Again, my game, I'm going to do what I want. Um, I felt like it's necessary for, especially to equip four heroes. You could drop to three, but then obviously you're going to lose, you know, lose a class because those are the four key classes in the game. Um, there are some other classes in the expansions, but um, also I went over on Colin. His loadout is only six, which means his old longsword has a three loadout. Old chainmail is five. Technically, that's an eight. Technically, he couldn't carry that, but I think it's kind of crazy to imagine a fighter could not carry a longsword and wear chainmail armor at the same time. Even a first level one, you're going to be able to hold a sword, a single-handed sword, and wear armor. I'm sorry. So I'm going to break those rules for me. Other than that, I do intend to follow the... Um, Warfighter Fantasy New Adventurer manual rules um, should be 99% following them other than like I said a couple you know little fudges here there hey it's a solo game I get to do what I want um, we're entering here we're right now we're in the town of Danbrook 
I'm going to wrap up the explanation here in a minute, but we're in the town of Danbrook. We'll be entering the Danbrook Crypts, right? We'll be moving. We have our player tokens here. Along the way, we have a couple locations we're going to encounter. I have a location marker card here. I'm going to go ahead and discard this and draw a nuisance location. On the Danbrook Crypts here, you can see it has what those, the numbers here are next to um, the icons for nuisance, common, um, was it... Uh, like legendary and mythical or something like that. Anyway, we're only going to be at the down in the nuisance in common. Two nuisance locations. So there's two nuisance locations. And then we will get to the mausoleum, which is where Agen, the skeletal archer, the big bad boss is. So we're going to work our way through the dungeon, a couple more locations, encounter the boss, encounter his henchmen, fight all them off, hopefully defeat them, and hopefully survive the adventure and defeat the bad. And uh, kind of... Uh, liberate the town of Danbrook from the evil in the nearby dungeon. Combat is going to occur in this area right here. Um, we will have the hostile cards. I'm going to place them here along with our targeting markers. Our hero, those counters right here, will end up placed in range zero and then eventually striking range as they close in for attacks. I will be using these two leather bags here for the draw bags for the targeting counters. Um, I do have a card, uh, action cards and item cards right over here. We'll cover them as we get to them. Um, and then nuisance location, common hostiles, and then nuisance hostiles up here. Um, I think that's everything, at least for the overview, right? I mean, if you're familiar with Warfighter, you'll be familiar with the game. There's some changes, of course, as there are in all the Warfighter games, a little adjustments. But, and if you're not familiar with it, hopefully between my explanation and then watching the playthrough, you'll learn how to play. So let's go ahead and dive into the actual playthrough and get started. All right, starting off, let's go ahead and swap this location marker. So we drew it as part of our action cards, which if you're not familiar, you start off with a hand of action cards equal to your health, plus any hand size bonus on your character. Eleanor has a, only has a health of three, so three cards, but she has plus three hand size, giving her six um, action cards. The action cards are going to be things like shadow action. One hero who is in shadows, who would be Whisper the Thief, potentially, gains an action. Um, deadly attack. Player, when you, or if you spend a experience point, you can upgun to any hero. So playing this, right, these are my cards. These are Eleanor's cards. But potentially, say you spend an experience point, which are these icons right here, on um, these little tokens here, you go ahead and get to use it for any hero. This card would declare non-explosion attack, add plus two to hit, plus zero for cover roll. We'll explain combat in a second. Um, Rush in is going to reduce entrance costs. Undaunted reduces vulns, which vulnerability counters are going to be put on hostiles and put on our heroes, which will make them easier to hit and easier for their cover to be um, defeated. And Clash, uh, inflicting wounds with a hand-to-hand -hand attack, which most are hand-to-hand -hand attacks, um, inflict one additional wound. However, you also inflict one on your hero. Ooh. And then location markers, right, in all the newer Warfighters. The original Warfighter, you would mix in um, locations. Here, you have the location markers. You go ahead, just toss that aside and draw from whatever would be the um, locations deck that you've created. Um, here we have the, it is two nuisance locations, right? So there's going to be two nuisance locations. So we'll go ahead and draw the first one, and we'll just place it in our hand. We drew Warming Fighter, which you can kind of look at it here. Um, a Warming Fighter, Warming Fire is a nuisance, then up in its corner, it has two entrance costs, has a little, a little nice little picture here, some artwork, tell its location. It's a dun it has some keywords on the bottom, right? It's a dungeon, it's free to play, fodder, which means when you attack, when you get a hit on an enemy, um, you gain an experience, or if you defeat him, you get an experience, one or the other. Um, if you have a thief, you can do ignite the kindling, pick plus two. Potentially, if you're successful, each hero heals one. Um, and you can see no nuisance monsters, but there is one common monster. So I have my common hostiles, monster and hostile, um, interchangeable terms here in this game. Um, plus one, this little icon means plus one to the roll to hide in shadows. And this uh, sword with the number next to it is the cost it takes to move from range zero to striking range. When you first move into location, you'll be in range zero. But from there, you can then move into striking range. The vast majority of the time, you're going to have to be in striking range to actually get a hit on hostiles. Of course, there are certain, you know, long range abilities, long range attacks that will, you can be in range zero. Generally speaking, though, unlike all the other warfighters, you can't be in a separate location. 99% of the time, you're going to have to be, if not all the times that I've seen so far, you're going to have to be in the same location as the actual hostiles. Okay. 
Um, yes, yeah, so we got that switched over. Um, it's the very beginning, so it is. We have six turns. There's a timer here in the top right corner of the map. We have six turns before guards start appearing on the guard track. We do not want that to happen. But six turns to work our way through the dungeon, encounter uh, old agent over here, fight him, defeat him and his henchmen, which we will worry about uh, in a little bit. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started here. So first off, um, we're in Danbrook. We're in the town. The towns always have an action. There is a, an action that's in the... Um, Nation guide here that you get with, I don't know if every copy has it or just the Kickstarter copies. I'm not sure. Mine was Kickstarter copy, but we're not going to worry about that. That's, I feel like it's more of a campaign thing, so we're not going to sweat that. And so we're just going to focus on the town card itself. We're in the, again, we're in the town of Danbrook right here. There is an ability or an option here, a skill check, I should call it. Uh, receive a blessing. Roll, roll, and it's lore plus four for one hero with divinity to gain three divinity. So lore is a skill which my LNR, the human wizard, has lore. She has lore 10 plus. Um, and then for one hero with divinity, which divinity, right, is divine, is for your any of your um, clerics, which Herka, she has divinity, she's a cleric, so that would help her to gain three divinity. Divinity she's going to spend when she casts her minor heals. So we definitely want extra divinity because we're probably going to be using some heal spells um, or powers, excuse me. Spells are for wizards. Powers are for, divine powers are for clerics. Now we roll lore plus four. What that means, we roll our lore check. Eleanor, again, has a lore 10 plus for success. That's a success. So on a 1d10, she has to roll a 10. Not very good chance, right? But two things. One, you can add a, you can spend an experience point to up gun to boost it, which only has to roll 8 plus, which we're not going to do. Or, and or, you can also see if there's any bonuses or negatives. This is lore plus 4, so technically we get a plus 4 to our roll. So really, all we need to roll is a 6 or higher. Should be easy. And we rolled a 4. We're unsuccessful. We do not gain extra divinity. So it should be an easy. Okay, we're good there. Let's go ahead. I think it's time to enter the crypts. Let's go ahead and enter the actual dungeon itself. Um, you go ahead and look in the top right. You see a cost to enter. Um, we're going to go ahead and start moving in. And that cost to enter is either you can look at your movement of your uh, heroes. And then you go ahead and discard any action cards to any cost that you don't have covered in movement. What does that mean? Very simple. Eleanor the wizard. She has a zero movement. It says arrow here on your card which means that it's going to take one card for her to move into the crypts. Let's go ahead and I think we have a card though. Yep. So rush in play when you and, or any hero, which I'm just going to do for me, cause I'm do for LNR are paying an entrance cost. Add three to your movement value or should we save it? Actually, we probably save it for the warming fire, huh? Yeah, let's do that. So for now, let's go ahead and we will use an action to move. So, cause there's a lot of things that cost actions. Um, Moving into location is one of them. And we'll go ahead and use the clash card. Since she has zero movement, we have to discard a card. I don't like that one because it causes a wound on your hero as well. And we'll go ahead and move her into the Danbrook Crypts. Now, there's no monsters or anything in here, right? No hostiles. Um, the other thing is that when you look on the card itself, just like with the Warming Fire I talked about, right? You have, for instance, the plus three on the left here. That's Hide in Shadows for our Thief. That four in the middle, I haven't covered that yet. That is, if you defeat this adventure, you get that many hero points. The hero points are what can be spent to level up your heroes. So, for instance, Colin, right now he's a first level fighter. It costs, it costs him nine resource points, a number in the shield. The little number in the yellow almost looks like a gold coin. It's not. Um, that is three. That would cost three hero points to level him from level one to level two. And every different hero has a different cost. Okay, so she moved in. Let's move in Colin. Now, Colin, if you look, he, and we're spending, right, each hero has two actions. So this is where the action tokens are right here. Also, I have targeting counters on them. One, two, three, four, which will be used when we're drawing for the hostiles targeting counters. Okay, so Colin here, he spends an action, and he has a one movement, though. So he go ahead, he does not need to, we don't need to discard any cards. By the way, these cards, even though it is Eleanor's hand, any of them can be discarded to pay for an action for even one of these other heroes that doesn't have a hand of cards. So Colin will go ahead and move him into the crypts as well. Herka, she will spend an action. And she has zero movement, so it's going to cost her. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, let's discard the Undaunted to move her in. So that's Herka, the cleric. And finally, Whisper, which he has a one movement, so he gets to move in for free as well. Well, you have to spend an action, but he will go ahead and move in. Okay, so now we moved into the Dambo Crips. Each one, each character has spent an action, each of our heroes. So we have one action left on each of them. Also, we're looking at location. So 
now that we are next to an open location, a blank location, we could now play our location card depending on any prerequisites, which luckily for this one, right, it's free to play. And a lot of them are, but they're not all um, free to play. So we're going to be able to place it without having to spend an action, anything like that. Now, remember though, or you should know, once you place it, it's going to be populated with any hostiles. So that one hostile card that we would draw, the one common hostile, as soon as we place it, there, it's going to be populated with them. Now, it's unlikely they can attack us directly because, again, with this game, you're in a dungeon, dungeon keyword. It's really you only can fight in one location. You can't really fight from location to location, right? But they're still going to be there, which means if we go in, they're going to be able to attack us. Or, you know, if we wait, they come to us, but then they're going to be attacking us here in the entrance of the Danburg Crypt. So it's kind of up to us, but let's go ahead, play the location card. It does not use an action. It's, a fr it's free to play. So we'll play the Warming Fire. Um, and we'll go ahead and, and there's a nice little uh, cheat sheet here on the actual board itself. Play a location card, um, place location, I should say. Resolve location, so if there's any special things on here. If it's negative, you resolve usually right away, usually when the first hero that enters. For us, it's the positive, right, because it gives a heal. So we don't have to worry about it right now. We'll resolve that after any hostiles are defeated. Place the hostile card, which it is going to be a common hostile. Go ahead and shuffle it up. I can't remember if I shuffled it from my last playthrough. So let's go ahead and do a quick little side shuffle here. So we will draw a common hostile. Boom. We drew these skeletal archers. So skeletal archers here. So a couple things, which is actually not a bad one. I don't think they're too bad to fight. Um, so looking at the hostile here, and we're going to go ahead and place him over here just to show that he's right next to us. Skeletal archer. He's a common uh common hostile he's worth six experience points when defeated those six experience points go to the last hero the hero that delivers the like killing blow that kills off the last hostile now although those xps on each character can be shared between them so it almost doesn't matter it's almost a shared bank of experience points now something really really key to remember when you're looking at something like this skeletal archer is that and all the hostiles in this game instead of having a bunch of hostile cards what the game does is it limits the cards, but it does have a lot of hostile targeting reticles based on hostiles, the number of hostiles on a card, slash, according to the new Adventure Manual rules, hostile stacks. So, for example, a Skeletal Archer, there are six of them, times six. That tells you there's going to be six hostile stacks. Each one only has one health, and there's little slashes here to tell you how many attacks. So, technically, for this hostile, there's six Skeletal Archers. Each have one health, and each can only do one attack. So I'm going to draw from this bag that has the regular um, regular hostile targeting markers to target my different, um, my different heroes here. If they had multiple attacks for each one, right? So say there was six, but then they each had two attacks. I would draw six from here, and then I would draw another six from here, showing that each hostile has, you know, a main attack and then a secondary attack. The reason is because then you only target and kill, right, kind of the main attack. Think of that. So once that's eliminated, obviously both counters are removed. So you kind of you have to differentiate between that first attack and then any follow-up attacks, right? Just so you know which how many hostile stacks are in an area. Okay, besides that, um, you have the treasure that you get when you defeat them. So besides experience points, right, we would get one copper. We will get, because think positive, right? We will get one copper and one silver. We'll also get one of the item gems here, which allows us to look through the item deck. Um, and then checking the actual uh, numbers over here. Again, they only have one health each. They have a cover of two. You roll. That is their roll. So the cover of two we have to defeat when we're attacking them. And then this is what they roll when they are attacking us. They can range zero to one. Um, technically, it says zero to one, right? So because they're ranged. However, again, because of the dungeon keyword, they're not going to be able to attack us over here. Um, and then there's some special keywords. They're undead. They're archers. Plus two attack versus range zero to one. Again, the one won't matter, but the zero will. So when our guys are first in range zero and they become under attack, it's going to hurt us more. Um, fire does plus two damage to them. Ice does negative two damage, so fire attacks do better. Ice is worse. Uh, and then plus add plus one to the entrance cost when entering the warming fire area, which is definitely not a good thing at all. So let's go ahead. Let's place the skeletal archers here in the hostile area. Um, we're going to draw the hostile counters, so it'll be six 
primary counters, which shows us that there are six of the old bad guy here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And no additional targeting, because again, they only have one attack each. So you can see each of the skeletons, right, is going to be targeting a different one of our heroes. Some may gang up, but other times you're going to have a hero that may not suffer any or be targeted at all. Um, here we have, what is it? And I like to kind of group them a little bit just to kind of make it a little easier. So Eleanor the wizard, right? She has one archer on her. Colin the fighter has one on him. There are two on Herka the cleric and two on Whisper the thief. That's not great. We'd rather have more on, say, the fighter and cleric maybe as opposed to um, Whisper the Thief, or especially uh, Eleanor, a human wizard. So, okay, so they have been placed. Um, we're not going to resolve hostile. Well, that is going to be the combat, any combat we will potentially have. So now we're going to go ahead and decide what are we going to do here? How are we going to have our combat? How are we going to handle this? So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to wait for them to move in with us because I don't think I want to rush in, start getting hit by them. I think I want to wait for them to come to us, to close to us. So one thing I'll do, though, um, just thinking ahead, I definitely want to reduce the cost of getting into uh, this location. So even with the plus one, they're going to leave it. So we're not going to cost extra. It'll still cost one. I'm going to go ahead and use Whisper has torches. He has four torches in the dungeon. I'm going to use a torch. That is a free action. We're going to place it here. Shows that this two is now down to a one, um, making it a little bit easier to move into that area. Okay. Um, I do want to keep some cards, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an action for Eleanor, my player hero, to discard and draw up to her full hand size. Again, I want to prepare for the next round of combat. The next round, the Skeleton Archer is going to move into the Danbrook Crypt's main area, and we're going to fight them. So, I'm going to go ahead. I want to keep Shadow Action. Um, I want to keep Deadly Attack. I don't really need Rush In yet, so I'm going to discard it. So, I'm going to discard this. So, I'm going to spend an action. I'm going to discard Rush In. I get to draw up to my hand size, which for me, right, is six. So I already have two, so I get to draw four more. One, two, three, four. We'll go ahead and put the location marker over here. Actually, we'll discard it, and we'll just go ahead and draw the Nusus location right away so we have it. Lair. Uh, dungeon, free to play, listen for footsteps. Phil, you get a guard roll. Ooh, that's awful. Absolutely awful. We do not want that to happen. So let's go ahead... Um, Place that there, though, because we don't have to play it right now. With a melee card, pay one action of the cost for you or any hero to enter or leave the striking area, which is nice. Um, advancing attack, play when you or any hero declares a non-explosion attack, add one vuln to the hero, but you add plus four to the attack, nice. Block, play when any hero in striking is about to suffer wounds from a hostile attack, suffer one or two fewer wounds. That's really nice, too. So we have a nice bit of cards here. All right, so here's what we got going on. Um, again, we could try to advance in there, but we'd start suffering attacks from them. That is the worst thing you could possibly do in this game, um, especially with six of them attacking. So even though it's kind of wasting a turn, at this point we're going to pass. We're going to basically use up these three actions. We have three actions left. We're not going to take our actions because we're going to wait because in the end of game turn step, the hostiles are going to close the range. So they are going to go ahead and move. And theoretically, they're going to move from, you know, warming fire, this location, to the entrance to the Dambo Crypts, where we are going to engage them in combat next round. So we're kind of skipping the rest of the hero actions. I'm passing. Um, no hostile attacks because they can't reach us there. So we're going to go to the end of game turn. Recover any focus, luck, or toughness. Um, our wizard has her focus. She's up to max of two. She has two, so she's good there. Um, we are going to do uh, any retain cost or none. Hostiles are going to close the range, so... They are moving from Warming Fire into Dambo Crypts. So when that happens, I'm going to go ahead and put our heroes in range zero because now we share the same location as the hostiles. So we are in range zero. Um, we're going to remove any hostile vulnerability counters, um, which there are none because we haven't engaged them in combat yet. Advance the adventure timer marker. So it goes from six down to five. Uh-oh. Advance any or do a guard roll if we were on the G, which we're not. So thank God. Um... Flip Shadow Counters, which Shadow Counter is... Oh, I don't have it out yet. I'll grab it out before next round. Um, but that is for Whisper the Thief to hide in shadows. When he's hiding in shadows, it gives him a bonus to certain things. Or for a member of this action, for a member Shadow Action, one hero in shadows gains an action. Very nice. Um, heroes and hostiles flip their action counters over. So, for instance, our heroes, the ones that have taken those actions, we'll go ahead and flip them over, make sure everybody's fresh. And when it comes to the hostiles, their actual targeting counters are the ones that you flip them over when they act. So at the end here, during this uh, end of game turn phase, you just flip them back over. 
um, and then remove any temporary action counters. That's it. We're going on to turn five, and there's going to be some combat this turn. So let's see how our uh, party of heroes fares against the skeletal archers. All right, start at turn five. We have the skeletal archers here. And let me go ahead and actually kind of move these off so you can see a little bit of the artwork and stuff here. Yeah, there we go. It's a little theme going, right? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and... Well, let's, let's get into this. But before we do any fighting, Whisper the Thief, he's going to go ahead and try to hide in shadows. That is a free action. So let's go ahead and he's going to roll for hide in shadows. His stealth is... Oh, not stealth. Hang on, where is it? Uh, shadows is 8+, plus, 6+, plus with a... Um, XP, which he will spend an XP to get the six plus. Um, yep, let's go ahead. So he just has to roll a six or higher on the D10. He got a nine. Beautiful. So he is now our Shadows Marker. Let's flip it over to, well, it was in Shadows anyway. So I already, I already knew ahead of time, right? It was going to end up in Shadows. So now we're in Shadows with Whisper, which means that he has a plus two slash plus one on his attack, um, which is pretty nice because he doesn't have a super strong attack. Sorry, Whisper, but that'll definitely help him. Um, and with the shadow action, which I'm gonna go ahead and play one hero in shadows gains an action so that he gains a temporary action. I'm just going to set it right on his, uh, actual player card. That way kind of tells me, Hey, that is a separate action. So, okay. What do we want to do here? Well, what we want to do first thing, we want to get some people involved, um, get some fighting. We've got to close into striking range right now. We're at range zero. I don't have any attacks that can hit at range zero. Um, Eleanor the wizard, her main attack is going to be fire hands. Um, her pretty much her only attack. Colin, he has a long sword that's hand to hand, right? That's going to be striking range. Fire hands, obviously, right? Touching. And it says right on here, um, range S, striking range. Old Mace, same thing for Herka the cleric. And Whisper, obviously, he's going to come in and he's, his attack, he doesn't have a separate weapon listed because his attack info is listed right on the card as part of the fact that, um, he is a squad hero. So everyone needs to be in striking range. So we need to move in. When we do that, we're going to suffer attacks. We're going to draw hostile reactions, but it is what it is. It's part of the game. So the nice thing is we get to pick kind of the order of them. So let's go ahead and move. Do I have a free, I thought I had a free movement. Oh no. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Okay. So the cost to enter um, striking range in the Dambo Crypts, we have to make sure what area you're in, right? We're in this location right here. It costs one. So it's going to cost an action um, or excuse me, a card, right? It's cost an action to um, move, but it also costs a, you know, a, there's a cost to it as well. So I'm going to move Eleanor, which she can do. Yep. So she can go ahead and do, I'm going to spend an action. I'm going to move her into striking range. There also would be a card cost. What I'm going to do is go ahead and, oh no, melee pays the action. Okay. That's what it is. Yep. So let's go ahead and I don't need to use the action. So may, I'm going I'm to play the melee card, pays one action of the cost for you to enter or leave the striking area. Um, Eleanor is going to go ahead and enter the striking area. There is still a technical cost to it, so we have to discard another card as well, which we'll do... Hmm, deadly attack, walking... Let's do advancing attack, just because it adds the vuln. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know. I know it's risky, but uh, let's just do it. Let's do it. So we'll do advancing attack. So that covers the cost. So she has now moved in striking range. That does draw a hostile reaction, though. So now we get to pick which hostile is going to attack us. Colin, the fighter, he's the meat shield number one. Herka's going to be meat shield number two, and then maybe Whisper, and then Eleanor. So Colin, if there's any available, to attack him. And he's number two, right? So there's, there's one that'll attack him. Let's go ahead and pick that skeletal archer first. So we'll flip it over to the acted side, and we're going to go ahead and roll attack. Attacks in Warfighter. Again, if you're familiar with it, it allows us to be very familiar to you. Sorry about that, but I'm just trying to teach the game um, kind of from base, from no knowledge or very little. You're going to roll D10 for the hit, right, for the attack, and then a D6 for cover. Cover on all of your player heroes, as far as I know in this game, is going to be a 1. And that number is, right, the 1 with that, like, hemisphere over it. So theirs is a 2, right? Ours are all 1s. So as long as they, just rolling the die, it's an automatic on it. You just have to remember there are certain modifiers that may change that later on. So that's why you kind of want to roll for it. So we're going to go ahead and roll both of them. Now check in the Skeletal Archer. Let's see what modifiers they have to hit. Right now, they have a plus two attack versus range zero to one. Again, no one, but range zero. Oh, that's where Colin the Fighter is. So we're going to get a plus two on their die roll. Um, there are no other modifiers that I can see. 
You can see on the chart here, a five or less is a miss, six to seven is one wound, eight to nine, one wound or, and a push, or you can spend one XP to avoid it, um, et cetera, et cetera. It just gets worse and worse the higher you roll. So um, the higher rolls not only are, can cause hits, it'll cause more hits and all that. So, or more wounds, I should say, excuse me, wounds. So with the plus two, that means even if they roll a three, they get a hit. Um, so we really want them to roll two or less. Yeah, wish us luck here. Okay. A two and a four. The two plus two is four. That's a miss. Um, the four does defeat the cover. So um, poor Colin does suffer a vuln. And there's a chart right on the board as well. You can kind of see defeat cover, fail, no effect, miss, no effect, which they almost never fail defeat. They almost never fa the fail uh, defeat covers. They almost always get a vuln, which as I mentioned is a plus two, plus one when attacking him. So he is now more vulnerable to future attacks. Okay, but that did use up an action. Um, that use up their action. So we go back to us. Um, we get to go. So we, what do we want to do, right? Do we want to move one of our heroes closer? It's going to cause another attack. Or do we want to start eliminating the enemy? I think that's what we want to do. So I think old Eleanor here, she's going to start whooping butt. So what she's going to do, she's going to cast Fire Hands. The cost of it is going to be two focus or one plus one action or four experience. Now remember, the cost of using it is also an action. So let me explain that, right? So we're gonna spend an action to use it. And then we can either spend our two focus, which we have two, we can spend plus one action, so we'll use another action, or we can go ahead and use four experience points. I wanna save our focus in case we need it for minor deflect. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use the last action here. So that's two actions, Will be the, that covers the cost to cast fire hands. Fire Hands is an explosion attack. We roll two dice, so 2d10. Or if we up gun, right, we spend an experience, we can roll three. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll spend this experience. Again, all the experience can be spent on anything. That's basically one pool of experience points. Um, we get to now roll 3d10, and we hit on a six higher. Or do we remember the skeletal archers here, fire plus two, which means that they are more susceptible to fire attacks. So we actually only need to roll fours to hit. So, and each one, because it is an explosion, can hit multiple hostiles. If it was a regular, say, hand-to-hand -hand attack, even if you're rolling multiple dice, you're only gonna hit one at a time, right? Your sword doesn't cleave through multiple enemies. Well, it does in the movies, but not in Warfighter Fantasy. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll. We need fours or higher. So each four plus is a hit. One hit, two hits, three hits. Holy cow. Boom. So. Eleanor the wizard, obviously she was one target one eliminate, so we'll say this skeleton's out of here. Um, and then let's do one on Whisper, and should we just do one on Herka as well, or should we also do the other one on Whisper? Because Herka does not have, oh, Herka actually doesn't have any armor. That's right. Okay, so let's go ahead and just even it out a little bit, so one off Herka. Okay, perfect. And we'll just throw those back in the chip bag here so that is three that that oh, Eleanor annihilated with um, fire hands now the downside of waiting over here right and letting them come to us I mentioned that fodder that would have given Eleanor three xps which really nice because we've been spending them right on things you see how useful they are we'll get more once we move into warming fire any hostiles this location we're going to go ahead and move into warming fire we're going to fight them there and get fodder at least that's probably the plan if we make it here right which looks like we will um but for now i think we're good that's it resolve that combat it's all good um <clears throat> we spent it so yeah so now it is the hostile reaction right so they get to go we get to pick so number three or number four right so targeting herka or targeting whisper let's go ahead and target they both have three actually both have three um health so it doesn't it's not a huge deal but let's go ahead and target um herka anyway just for like the cleric's the one we should try to target first right so we will flip the action over um he's gonna go ahead and attack again range uh range zero so there's a plus two to the attack and again it's on his chart it has nothing to do with like armor nothing like that the armor can potentially absorb wounds but we'll get to that once um colin takes hits in the future so Okay, let's gonna roll, and it is a plus two, right? So as long as they get a three or higher, they're gonna hit. Anything less, two or one, that's a miss. A two, awesome. So defeated cover, but then missed with the two. So because they defeated cover, poor little um, Herka does take a Voln counter. And you can flip them over for a Voln technically. So for instance, you can do it like that instead. 
and then add the counters later once they get more bone. So we'll just do that instead, actually. Okay. And now let's end for the hostiles. So let's go back to the heroes. What do we get to do? Well, we want to we want to inflict some damage here. We want to do you know cause some cause some damage here. So let's go ahead and have Whisper is gonna go ahead and use one of his bonus his bonus action to move into striking range. Remember, he's also hiding in shadows. Um, that movement into striking range uh, is the cost of um, one. However, does he have, does his one movement help with that? I believe it does. Let me double check the rules. All right, so it's just the action it takes. Um, so we spent our action to move and that's what it is moving into. Um, so technically, when you're in like, say the warming fire area, that location, it costs zero action to move into striking range. So you just move in for free. Now it still causes a house hour action, which we're now gonna have with Whisper, but it doesn't cost any action. So I think earlier I discarded a card for it or something. That was incorrect. That's all right, mistakes happen. Hey, we learn as we go, right guys? Okay, so um, cost one action, which we spent our temporary action for, to move Whisper into striking range. That was gonna be a hostile reaction, hostile targeting uh, Whisper. Oh, speaking of, speaking of which, coming right after him here. Um, I wish it was a negative when you're hiding in shadows to like, or like a bonus, right? To make it harder to hit, but I don't believe there is at all, unfortunately. So anyway, let's go ahead and roll. Um, yep, it's gonna roll, D D10, D6. Remember now, oh, but because he's attacking him and he's not, he's in range, stri he's striking range, not range zero, he doesn't get that plus two. So he does need a five or higher to hit. So five or higher to hit, so hopefully a four or less. A two, that's a miss. He does defeat the cover though, so. Just like pretty much everyone else, Whisper now will suffer a Vuln. He has plus two, plus one on that. Um, let's see. Yep, perfect. Okay, let us... And we have three hostiles left, right? Yep, three hostile stacks. Let's go ahead and... Colin will spend an action to move into striking range. And same thing with Herka. And now that the hostiles are all acted we have free free actions. All those actions, they're not gonna be able to cause a hostile reaction because there are no hostiles that are available. The Skeletal Archers have already shot their bone arrows at us or something. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, whoop their butt and uh, take care of them here. So what I'm gonna do is let's have, hmm, oh, well, yeah, I think what we'll do is, because I wanna get rid of some Vulns as well. Um, Whisper will go ahead and attack. He will attack one of them. Let's see, I think right here. Yep. We'll use an action. He will conduct an attack. He has, when well, he's in shadows, which he is, he has a stealth plus two plus one. So he's gonna automatically defeat the cover because their cover is two, remember? So he has, the minimum roll on a D6 is a one. So it's automatically defeat the cover. But we just need to roll a, and a nine causes a, a, a wound. So we need to roll a seven, so seven or higher. 10, bam, 10 plus two, 12. Oh shoot, if it was 13, we'd do two wounds. Well, that doesn't really matter though. So anyway, um, yeah, he goes and has and hits. Penetration was a minus one. So technically if you rolled a one, it wouldn't have defeated penetration, but it did, we rolled a four. So um, we go ahead and defeat one, which we will pick the one that's on him. Get out of here. No fodder though, nothing like that, remember? So no bonuses there. Um, we'll go ahead and Let's try someone else too, just to see if Colin, let's see what he can do. So Colin, we'll go ahead and spend an action. He will swing his sword. He has a plus one hand to hand. He's swinging his long sword. Um, and he has standard is seven and no other bonuses. We're not gonna spend any XPs or anything like that. We only have one left. So he needs to roll a six or higher. And to defeat cover, right, his cover's two. So we need a two or higher on the cover roll and a six or higher on the um, attack roll. Defeated cover, and we got a hit. Boom, wound, defeated. Let's go ahead and eliminate uh, number three here. So the only one left is hostile targeting Colin himself, which let's go ahead and spend, Whisper will spend his last action. Should we do it with Whisper? Yeah, Whisper will spend his last action. Remember, he's got that plus two for being in stealth. Um, so all he needs to hit is a seven or higher. Yep, seven or higher, and then a, what would it be? A three or higher? No, two or higher, excuse me, on the um, defeat cover roll, targeting him. That's a cock die, unfortunately. It was a hit, but it was a cock. Four, oh no, four, five, six. Ah, oh, it's not good enough. 
So he does get a Vuln. So put a Vuln on to so defeat a cover on him. So now he's a little bit easier to hit. So now when, oh, I don't know, say Herka here, Herka wants to get an attack in because she gets Divinity if she does. So Herka is going to go for it with her old mace. Um, she's going to swing. She has a standard hit is six. No hand-to-hand -hand bonuses, anything like that. So he suffer extra versus, he doesn't versus blunt. I thought maybe he did for being a skeleton, um, but he does not. So six or higher on the hit. And then the cover, penetration is a minus one. Finishes two. So I actually need to roll a three. Three or higher on, oh, but then the plus two, plus one. See, that's where that comes in comes in handy here. So technically, all we need to roll is a four, four or higher on the D10, and then a, what would that be? Let's see. Um, three drops to two, plus one. So, so you need to roll two or higher. So four or higher, two or higher. Four, three. Boom, that'll count. Boom, we get a hit on him. And again, one health, right? So that's why one health or one hit's defeating all of them. Boom, he's eliminated, which a couple of nice things happen. One, by defeating the Skeletal Archer, by hitting him, excuse me, um, the Odin the Wise power, Herka gets two extra divinity, which is very nice. We, there will be a, a point where we will be spending them to heal up. So I'm going to put those two extra divinity on her. And secondly, by defeating the Skeletal Archer, we get a couple bonuses. One, we get six experience points. Now, technically, those all go to Ola, two, four, six, go to Herka. But as we have, you've witnessed by now, these experience points can be spent by anybody for any reason. So basically, it's a pool of them. Um, and we get one copper, ooh, a silver, ooh, and we get a gem to look through the item deck. So how that works is, we'll spend our, we'll send, put our monies over here just to show what we're getting from old Dan Brooke. Um, one gem. What that means is you have your item deck here, and I'm going to shuffle it up because I had it and did not have it shuffled um, properly. So we're going to shuffle it, and on the back of the item cards, you build the item deck at the beginning of the adventure, so I already did that, to account for any items that your characters can use. So if there's items in here that say it looks like it's clearly for a thief and you don't have a thief in your party, well then take it out and put in a different item. Build 20 items. Um, in your deck. And then when you have it, you go ahead and look at the back. Look at the cost. We only get one gem for the Skeletal Archer. So we look at that. That's a two. No good. So we go ahead and I think we discard it. Um, a one. There you go. We got that one. And you would keep going. Say we it, we had had three, right? Three gems. We would got the first one with two and then we would draw it again and got the one. All right. So the one, what is it? Da -da -da. Focus potion. It's a potion that's technically worth one gold. Um, any hero, one hero, any hero has focus, so it'd be for Eleanor the Wizard. Potion, you can expend it. You gain one fo focus or pay one experience points to gain two focus. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we'll go ahead and place that next to her card here to show that, hey, we have the ability to gain some focus back in the future. Um, I think that was it, right? The treasure, we got the XPs, we got all that good stuff. So, boom, we'll go ahead and toss him aside. Took care of business there. See a skeletal archer. Okay, now there are no actions left though, right, unfortunately. Okay, so we're gonna go into the um, end of game turn. Recover, focus, luck, or toughness. We didn't have to use any of those. Um, literally none of them because we kicked the skeletal archer's butt so bad. Um, we're going to pay retain costs, hostiles close range. Well, there's no hostiles on the board. Remove hostile vol encounters. Again, there are none. Advance the adventure timer. That does go down, goes on to four, dun, dun, dun. Um, guard roll, no need yet. Flip our shadow counters, yep, so he is no longer in shadows. Heroes and hostiles flip their action counters and remove any temporary. So that temporary one, right, gets put back in the in my tray and we'll flip them back. So we're gonna go into, what is it, turn four here? And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, move into the warming fire. We're gonna play another location and uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and see what happens. We'll be one step closer to the mausoleum. All right, start of turn four here. Everyone is ready to go. Let's get moving. We're going to move from the entrance to Dambo Crypts into the Warming Fire location. Okay, let's go ahead and move Whisper first. So it takes an action, right, to move locations. Check his movement. He's moving to one. It was two, but we have a torch that uh, goes down to one. So he, get, he gets to move in for, uh, well, free. Cost an action, so it's not free. Um, Herka, we're going to go ahead and spend an action for her to move. 
She doesn't move into zero, so we also have to discard a card. So we'll discard the black card here to pay for the movement costs. Move her over. Uh, Colin here, he's going to move over, spend an action. He has a movement of one, so again, he is good to go. So we can just move him over. And finally, Eleanor the wizard will spend an action. She has zero movement, so we have to also discard a card. Let's discard this card to move her over. Okay. All right, now we're sitting in the warming, ooh, the warming fire. Now, remember, we can ignite the kindling, which is a pick roll, which is our thief. Success, each hero heals one. No one's hurt yet, but it could happen in the future. Any, any monsters in this location, which we're going to play the lair, which let's go ahead and do that. So it's free to play. So go ahead and play the lair here. Dungeon, free to play. Listen for footsteps. That's a future uh, action once we're there. Um, and then we can... Um, or we will fill it now with a hostile, right? So it is a nuisance hostile. So before, I think we had a common, right? Yeah, the uh, Skeletal Archer was technically a common hostile. So the lair here is going to be a um, nuisance hostile. So those Skeletal Archers were not that tough, but sometimes it does, you never know what you're gonna get. It depends on kind of the party makeup, any special abilities they have, things like that. So, all right, shuffled up. Let's see what we get. Dun, 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 giant rats, oh God. A swarm of giant rats. Okay, um, and there's nine of them. So we'll go ahead and take care of all of that. Um, put them out. And then I got uh, a couple things I want to do before we kind of... And I think we're going to do, though, just like last time, is we're going to... And remember, we're getting out um, nine of them. I know, it's a lot. It's It could be a lot sometimes when you have multiple... Because sometimes you'll have an area where you'll have uh, two hostiles and they'll each have a bunch of... Um, hostile stacks. So two hostile cards, multiple stacks. Um, I did a combat um, a few games ago. I've talked about it online a little bit. I had uh, 16 hostile stacks and some of them had multiple attacks. I, I was suffering 22 attacks from them. Yeah, it was uh, a little tougher than that Skeletal Archer last turn. All right, so there's nine of them. And just like before, right, there's nine giant rats, one health each, um, and only one attack each. That's why there's only these. Again, if they had multiple attacks, we'd also draw from this one. Just to show you a quick example, you're going to see it later, but show you a quick example, see it looks different, it's just a weapon. Just show that, say, oh, hey, this one or this one or wherever, right? We're going to put it, he has his main attack and then he has that secondary attack. Also, like I said, though, that keep it separate because that way when we defeat him, oh, that would go with it, right? So anyway, not a thing right now, though. Okay, so they're chilling there in the lair, like giant rats, ugh. All right, we are not ready yet, though, for sure we're not ready. What we're going to do is Elnar the wizard is going to go ahead and spend an action to draw and discard, which there are no discard or discard and draw, I should say. There are no discarding. Um, she has no hand, so we get she gets six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And right now, that location marker is not useless because you can spend it, you know, use it for like the cost of things, but it's definitely something that I don't need right now, right? Like I don't, and I'm not even going to draw another, I'm not even going to draw a uh, location because the locations are full, right? We have these locations out. We are connected to the objective. Next move or next area will be the objective. Otherwise, we have one-on-one. -on -one. Um, play when you and any hero declares a non-explosion attack um, with only one hostile. Add plus one, plus one to all heroes' attacks against that hostile until the end of the turn. Critical hit. Roll a 12 plus and inflict a wound. Inflict one additional wound. Nice. The attack um, adds plus two, plus zero. Inspiration. Play with any hero limits hostile. The hero gains XP equal to the hostile's printed health. Hmm, not bad. Advancing attack. Play when you... Okay, I don't like that one. <laughs> I don't like that one. Okay. Um, all right, Eleanor went. Um, Colin here, he's going to go ahead and take an action. What he's going to do is remove a Vuln. So he's going to go to no Vulns on him. Herka, the same thing. Whisper, the same thing. So each of them is going to spend their last action to eliminate the Vulns on them. So they are at full fighting capacity, full health. And normally, right, playing those actions would suffer a hostile reaction. However... Remember, these giant rats are in the lair still. They're not in the warming fire area yet. Yet. However, that is it for player actions. No cards that I want to play. Nothing like that. Nope, we're good. So, we're going to go to end of game turn. Recover focus luck toughness. No need. All full. Um, no retain costs. Hostile close range. Oh, so the giant rats. So, thematically, imagine, they come scattering, moving from the lair into the warming fire. Oh, there they are. So, let's go ahead and put these nasty rats. There they are. Um, let's put our heroes here in range zero. Show they are ready to go. Um, no hostile vuln counters yet. Adventure timer marker is going to move down to three. Ooh, yikes, don't like that. Um, 
All right, sorry, a little camera snafu, but you shouldn't have missed anything. Um, flip any shadow counters. They was already in no shadows. Heroes and Hostiles flip their action counters, which I'm going to go ahead and do off camera in between turns here. Um, and then remove any temporary ones. There were no temporary. So I'm going to pause the video, get everything all set up, and we'll be starting turn three. All right, start of turn three here. Giant rats just moved into the warming fire location. We're at range zero. There they are, poised here, ready to gnaw, gnaw off our feet or gnaw our ankles off. So let's go ahead and uh, get actioning here. Before we spend any actions though, Whisper the Thief is gonna go ahead and try to um, hide in shadows. He doesn't have any special abilities to pay for that though right now or anything like that, right? Let's see, no, but oh, it's free, that's right. So um, we're gonna go ahead and check. Um, I think I forgot the last time I forgot the bonus too. Oh, well, who knew? But I, we were successful, so it didn't matter. All right, so he has a shadows of eight. We're definitely going to spend an experience point. So now it upguns it, so he gets a six plus. Also check the bonus of locations, a plus one, right? So technically he only has to roll a five or higher. Um, just the one die, so D10, five or higher. A one, uh... Dang, I don't have nothing for that. He has luck, but the luck only gives a plus two. <laughs> That's not enough. So fortunately, he's not hiding in shadows. Um, what a waste of eight. But it was a free effort, so it doesn't matter. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. I think we need we got to get uh, Eleanor the Wizard in to, for her explosion attack because it's kind of the best attack any of us have. So um, there are no bonuses for movement right now. I'm starting to realize these cards aren't as great as I thought they were. Um, but Eleanor's going to go ahead and spend an action. And she's going to go ahead and move into striking range. So there will be a... Um, no, no, it's free, isn't it? That's right. Warming fire, the area is free. So we actually only spend an action. Actually, it's a free cost. Remember, always remember to check that. Um, on the actual location card, right? Check the little sword and number. There is no action cost to move in. So we just go ahead and move in. However, it does still cost a hostile reaction. That is a fact. So let's go ahead and have, again, Collins our meat shield. Let's go ahead and have anyone's attacking him at two. Let's go ahead and do, we'll swap these around again. This is just what I like to do to kind of make it a little easier to kind of keep track of where, which ones are attack, getting attacked from, you know, which heroes. So a few of them can attack him. So let's go ahead and start off with this one here. He, this giant rat is going to gnaw at um, poor old Colin here. Um, let's check for modifiers. So it's a pest, which is just like informational, and then a swarm plus two. What that means is if there's at least two hostile stacks attacking him, which there's three, so there is at least two, they get a plus two to their attack. They only hit, though, on a nine or higher. So they have to, even with the bonus, they have to roll a seven. So, um, yep, and then they have, they have no cover, which is crazy. But anyway, uh, so seven or higher, they will hit. A five, that is not, they do defeat cover, though. So Colin, where's he at? Right here. He's going to go ahead and we'll pivot him over to show that he has a um, Voln on him. Okay, now we have uh, Eleanor the Wizard. She is nice and close. She's going to go ahead and spend an action and use her fire hands, and she will spend another, let's see. Yep, she'll spend another action. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that's what she'll do. Spend another action, which pays for, so first one to activate fire hands, second one pays the cost. So it's uh, two dice, remember, for the explosion of fire hands. Plus, we're going to go ahead and use... An experience point here to upgun it so she gets three dice. Um, is there any other bonuses? No, none that I can see. Okay, so any sixes, six or higher's are going to be hits. Up to three different ones. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Seven, nine, and two. Hey, that's two hits. I will take it. So, and they only have one health, so each hit is going to cause a wound, right? Which eliminates them. So let's go ahead and get rid of the two that we're going to be targeting her. Because again, she's, we don't want her taking hits at all like we don't want anyone taking hits we definitely don't want her taking hits now she eliminated two hostiles so not only is it well good because she's weakening them but because we're now in this area of warming fire that has fodder she gets two experience points so you can see where the experience you don't start off with a lot but they can quickly build up now it does cause a hostile reaction right so let's go ahead and have this other hostile targeting colin the fighter go ahead and attack um, same dice other than Colin, there's a plus two, plus one. So all he has to roll is six or higher. Nope, actually seven or higher to get a hit, right? What is it? Oh, no, but he's swarming still. Okay, so it's plus two, plus two. So it's plus four, plus one. So technically, um, plus four, he just has to roll a five or higher. So five or higher on the end is a hit. 
eight. That is a hit. And now let's check the math though. So eight, what was it I said? It was plus four. It becomes a 12. That's actually two wounds, defeats cover. So that'd be two wounds on Colin, which is not, we do not want to happen. So what we'll do is we will spend one of his toughness to, oh, he has only one toughness to eliminate one wound, to prevent one wound. So there's only one wound that could potentially hit him. He will, we have to check his chainmail armor. It has a sturdiness of four. So right now with four sturdiness, the cover on it is four. So we will roll a 1d6 to see what the sturdiness is, or if, excuse me, if the sturdiness covers. So four or less will be good. It's a six, so actually it doesn't. So it does go through and Colin is hit with a wound, unfortunately. Boom, one right there. Okay. Oh, that's a bummer on him. Um, okay. Do we have any special, I'm trying to think of any special uh, abilities here. Okay, so now we go back to the the heroes. Let's go ahead, uh, speaking of which, Colin, let's move him in. So we'll spend an action to move. No, again, it's free. I keep, I keep thinking about spending an action for movement. Get a little tricky sometimes, right? It's free movement here, so move into um, striking range. So he'll do that for free. Does the stuff for the hostile attack. So let's go ahead and have the, um, yeah, hold the same one against him. So... Plus two, plus one, and plus two for swarm. Yep, so it's a total of plus four. So as long as they roll a five, it'll be a hit. Anything less is a miss. Boom, that's a miss. It was a vuln though, so he does take another vuln. So he is starting to become increasingly likely to be hit, unfortunately. Okay, now Colin, hmm, let's see what we have here. Um, he's within range, he can start attacking. Um, why don't we get her gun range as well? Let's go ahead and do, let's do Herka's, well, shoot. Yeah, we'll do Herka. Herka's gonna go ahead, does not cost an action to move into striking range. I know I literally am out of my mind here with that. Um, I'm used to that, I know there it was, here it will be, in the lair it would be, so it's one of the few locations it's not. But anyway, moved into striking range. Um, so we're gonna have an attack, we'll suffer. Let's do it against Herka here. So just a plus two because, oh no, she's not a swarm because there's only one attacking her, so there's no swarm. So it's literally just a roll, but it has to be a nine or higher to hit. It's a five, so it is a miss. However, she is vulned because the defeat cover roll defeats her cover. Okay. Now let's go ahead. Herka, Colin, should we start getting some swings in on him? I think we should. So she actually has the best chance. No, he does. No, it's even. So let's go ahead, here's what we'll do. Colin, he's gonna go ahead and take a swing at one of the giant rats. Um, he has a plus one to his hand-to-hand. -hand. Standard is, a long longsword is a seven. So he just needs a six or higher to hit, and there's no other modifiers. He's gonna go ahead and target um, number one here. What does he need, a six or higher? Yeah, six or higher. And then let's do deadly attack. Adds a plus one, or plus two, plus zero. So it becomes a plus three. So he only needs to roll a four or higher to hit. Six, it's a hit, and defeats cover, he is eliminated. And because member of fodder keyword, we get an experience point. Good job, Colin. Okay, and that causes a hostile reaction. So this four here will go ahead and attack. He will attack, so it's Whisper. Um, and Whisper has, yep, just the regular one cover. Four, he's swarming him because there's two of them. That's plus two, other than that, no Vuln or anything like that. So it'll just be plus two, plus one, or excuse me, just the plus two to hit. So he needs to roll at least a seven for hit. Six or less is a miss. Six, miss, but he did defeat cover. So Vuln onto poor Whisper. Okay. Um, Colin's gonna go ahead and, or should we swing or should old? Actually, no, Herka's gonna go ahead and swing. Herka's gonna go ahead and swing. He's gonna, she is gonna swing um, old Mace at the one that has not attacked yet. Um, she has a six to hit, minus one pen. But if we spend an XP, which we will, because we got plenty, spend an XP, oh, two XP, dang. That's a lot. Eh, eh, we'll do it anyway. Two XP, she has, her attack is now skillful, so it drops from a six to hit. It has a plus one, I should say. Um, plus one with zero pen. Um, plus one to hit, no other bonuses to hit. That can, so we need, what is it, a six or higher, five or higher, excuse me, five or higher. Um, okay, go ahead and just roll it. 
five or higher. A uh, one. Oh my god. All right. So one will break the weapon because it's an old mace, unless we spend an experience point, which we will, um, to prevent it from breaking, which definitely will do that. Yikes. Okay. Um, I don't think I had any bonus help there anyway. No, I didn't. Okay. So hostile reaction. This hostile will go ahead and attack Whisper. Um, Whisper does have a plus one, plus two, uh, plus two, plus one, excuse me, from uh, there. And he's still swarmed as well. So it's a total of plus four. So they just need a, what is it, a five? You have a five or higher hits, four or less than not. A three, that's a miss, but he does suffer another Vuln. Right there. But they've all acted, so what we can do now, take our time a little bit, um, let's go ahead and get Whisper. We'll go ahead and move into Striking Range. Remember, it's free. I finally remembered. Um, let's do, dun, dun, dun. let's see, Colin. Just trying to think about the start swing. Any special attacks here, anything like that? Not really, so. Colin will go ahead and use an action, and he will go ahead and swing with his longsword. No XP cost, nothing like that. He's just going to swing, um, and he has a seven, seven to hit, no bonuses, no plus one. So he needs a six or higher to hit. Nine, that's a hit, and defeat cover, so that is going to eliminate, cause a wound and eliminate one of the giant rats. Let's go ahead and get rid of one of the ones targeting Whisper here. And I will play, so he gets one XP because of fodder. And I will play Inspiration. Play when any hero limits a hostile. Hero gains XP equal to the hostile's permanent health. It's just one, but hey, that'll bump it up to two XP for killing him. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, let's see. Then let's go ahead and... Um, trying to think. Maybe Whisper is going to spend an action to eliminate a Vuln. Reduce his vuln, I should say. Um, and then Herka will attack. She'll attack with her mace. So this is a six to hit, no pluses. So six or higher, she'll attack one of the ones on Colin so he's not getting attacked by everybody. Actually, no, we'll attack the one that's number four. So that is a miss. It is a vuln is inflicted on him. The one vuln inflicted on him right there. So a little bit easier to hit. How many actions we got left? Oh no, we only got one action left. So Whisper here, he will do an attack. He doesn't have a very good chance because he's not hiding in shadows. So he has to roll a nine or higher to hit. Um, however, we are going to attack the um, here and we have a lock, so, which gives us a plus two. So let's go ahead and use the lock. So plus two, plus three, plus four. So plus four. So we're gonna have to roll a five or higher to hit, right? Yep, five or higher. Oh my gosh, two. All right, that's another Vuln, but it won't matter because we are out of actions, I believe. Should've done that. <laughs> um, I didn't know I needed it though. It's closed on here. Yeah, you have to do it before. All right, so all of our actions are used up. All right, so we're done with the um, action phase here. So we go into the end of turn phase. Recover focus, luck, toughness, which we did use all those. So everyone gets one back, so. Old Whisper gets his luck back. Colin gets his toughness back. Oh, he's, you've always been tough, buddy. Don't worry. Um, focus, I didn't spend any yet. I uh, haven't needed to. Let's see. Pain cost, no. Hostiles close range, no. Remove hostile vuln counters. counters. Yes, they, their vuln recovers. The heroes is not in the base rules. Um, I have some uh, special rules I use sometimes where I do have us recover, but we're playing by the NAM rules right now. Um advance the adventure timer down to turn two yikes um and then guard roll flip shadow counters no need no need we'll flip the hostile and hero action counters over and move any temporary ones other than that that is wrapping up turn three of our adventure here going into the danbrook crypts all right start of turn two here everyone is ready to go lots of actions um, let's go ahead and start off. <clears throat> Don't forget our free uh, Hide and Shadows. Make a Shadows check roll for Whisper. So he gets on an 8 plus. Um, I'm looking at the enemies here. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and give it a, um, what is it, 1 XP, right? 1 XP, yep, to um, upgun it. So 6 plus on the roll. Okay, so 6 plus on the roll. 
eight. That is good. So he is now hiding in shadows. And that was a free action. And there's no um, hostile reaction to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So remember, we're in the warming fire. We're fighting our giant rats here. <clears throat> mm, let's see here. Let's go ahead and Eleanor is going to try to just wipe out a bunch of them at once. So Eleanor will spend an action to use fire hand spell. And she will spend, spend another action or two focus? Hmm. No, she'll do her other action. Um, yep, yeah, just to, to pay the cost of it. So <clears throat> fire hands is 2d10 or two rolls, I should say. And then, yes, we're definitely going to spend an XP to upgun it. So you get three dice, and they're going to hit on a six higher. No weaknesses to fire or anything like that. Let's go ahead and three. So we need six or higher to hit. Six or higher to hit. Come on. Two hits. Perfect. So we have four, six, seven. So two hits, <clears throat> one wound each, which will definitely eliminate um, some of these. So let's get rid of, when I get two of them right, mm, uh, Whisper, Herka. Let's do... So the two not on Colin here. Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> and because of fodder keyword, remember we get two experience points. So very nice. Okay, all right. Um, oh, hostile reaction though, right? So let's go ahead and have one of them. Definitely is going to attack poor uh, Colin, which and he has a plus two, plus two, so that's a total plus four. Ooh, that's kind of brutal. Plus four and is swarming, so a total plus six. Oh no, roll low, roll low. Six plus one is seven. That is actually a miss. Somehow that is a miss. Um, it was another Vuln though. So he now has three Vuln on him. We're gonna have to start getting rid of those, unfortunately. Um, but that was somehow a miss. Um, let's go ahead and do, um, let's see. Does removing a Vuln cause a hostile reaction? Let me see here. Remove uh, Vuln. It does actually, which is pretty brutal by the way. I think that's kinda, kinda stinks, but okay. So Colin's gonna go ahead and <clears throat> spend an action and remove one of his volns so it goes down to just the two of them it doesn't cause a hostile reaction against him which again just like before is going to be a total of plus six so that is a 10 and defeats his cover so a 10 is one uh, wound but we're going to go ahead and actually you know what no we're going to do is we are going to take the wound well shoot no, we use the toughness. We use the toughness. All right, all right, relax, guys. Um, okay, back to old Colin here. And let's go ahead and... Herka, no, let's do Whisper. Whisper's gonna go ahead and conduct an attack against the last one here. Um, he has, he's in stealth, right? So it's plus two, so to hit. Normally it's a nine, he only needs a seven. A seven to hit. <clears throat> he rolls a seven. That is a hit. So he gets a hit on him and eliminates the last giant wrath that hasn't acted yet. Gets an experience point thanks to fodder. All right. So there are none left that can act. So Colin here is going to spend his last action. Remove a vuln. Um, let's do uh, whisper Herka. Well, okay. Herka will <clears throat> attack attack one of them and she has a six standard six minus one i think that'll be good enough to just try so let's go ahead and do that that's a that's a hit it is a hit so she eliminates one and gets xp thanks to fodder all right there's only one left let's do hmm i want a couple things here but i'm a little like mm, i don't know if i'm gonna be able to so we'll see let's just do herka will attack again <clears throat> again she has that no bonuses so it's a six or higher that's a, oh, that was a three that's a hit so it is eliminated and one of her xps will just double increase that on there okay so that's all of her actions so whisper let's go ahead and take his last action will be to go out of home and then Oh, that's it for everybody, huh? Oh, bummer. Okay. All right. That is all their actions. Um, oh, the giant rat was eliminated, though. So we get two copper. <clears throat> copper. The copper's at the bottom because, you know, they're like pennies, basically. All right. A couple more copper over here. Very nice. No other treasure. Um, we do get four experience points. So it technically goes to the last person, which was who was the 
hit was it uh herc i think who did the did the last hit over here so put it on her and eliminated very nice okay <clears throat> um yep and that is it for what i can see here for any of our actions so um recover focus toughness and luck which i think toughness for old colin here he gets that back luck we didn't use and focus is still at max um retention cost none hostile close range hostiles are eliminated um remove hostile bone counters nope uh, advanced trend marker oh no it's down to one um guard roll no need yet flip the shadows yep that'll go back and then we'll flip our action tokens back here our action counters and uh yeah it's gonna be the turn one the la not the last turn because once it goes into the g it just you start rolling for guards um so you get to keep playing it's just uh that's not you know not great for you so okay that'll be it uh let's go into uh the next turn all right beginning of turn one here we are in the warming fire location i went ahead and moved us off the the combat board here and let's we got to get over to the lair so we can go into the mausoleum so let's go ahead and move into the lair let's uh whisper here's and go ahead and spend a torch which lowers the cost to zero um so we can go ahead and move in there it does still take a um, move action does cost um does cost an action so um let's go ahead and spend an action should we get everybody over there i don't have anything that helps with that right nope um, let's go ahead and spend everyone will spend an action to move over there and we will go ahead and move everyone over to the lair oh wait before we leave though i'm going to do a um the ignite the kindling pick plus two a uh, success member heroes heal one because we have colin has a wound on him so before technically before we leave um whisper's gonna go ahead his pick chance is a plus let's spend a experience point so increase it to six plus with a bonus of what is a bonus plus two so we just need to roll four higher four boom so we'll go ahead and heal colin's wound all right nice okay now let's go ahead and move we already remember the torch eliminated the location cost and now that we're here in the lair let's go ahead and it's a free action let's activate the objective so we take off the inactive marker here and it becomes active what that means very simple first off when you look at it mausoleum um one action to activate oh that one okay well this one does take an action okay um let's go ahead and use i guess whispers action sure um seal the coffin pick plus two fail guard roll eliminate presence so when we enter there we have to deal with that but we already have to deal with something in layer so i may have got jumped ahead of myself a little bit here so let's go ahead we enter the layer um listen for footsteps pick plus two we're gonna want to do that so six plus if we use let's use eight xp and then a plus two so we need a four higher so we definitely want that we got a 10 perfect so we you know, were able to listen for footsteps whisper paid off his name paid off all right now jump ahead of myself now we'll do the activate which does cost an action we use whispers other action for that um show the mausoleum now we will spawn the big bad agen and then his skeletal swordsman um you can see agen here is just one of him he has five health though and he does have two attacks so what you do we'll draw uh, the map here boom he will be targeting uh four he'll be targeting whisper oh god um i don't like that um and then he gets a second attack so this is where we would draw from here draw from the other boom so he will also be targeting eleanor the the wizard that is literally i think the worst possible let's see here's where we, we can use the one-on-one -on -one. we'll save this one-on-one -on -one. we're going to use that on him as soon as we eliminate skeletal swordsman speaking of which there are seven of them no extra attacks one health each so easy to defeat but there are going to be seven of them which is not great so one two three four five yeah i suppose we could do it like this so we can you know have our see the artwork a little bit right what did i say seven five Six seven hostile. So we're we'll fighting seven skeletal swordsmen and then Agen or Agen, right? Agen. Boom. Okay. All right. Now they do not come to us. They are uh, undead over overlord between overlord and then he has one to the moving cost. Nice. Not nice, by the way. Um, protected. So he's protected by him. So we have to defeat the skeletal swordsman before we can hit Agen. And he's, as the overlord, I believe it is, he does not leave here. Dungeon fodder. 
ultimate present. Yeah, they just stay there, so they don't like chase you through the dungeon or anything like that. So we will have to go to them. Excuse me. Okay. Um, what else we got left for actions here? Let's do it. Let's do Herka. Spend an action to remove a Vuln. And then same with Colin. Spend action to remove a Vuln. And then let's do a just for last action here for old Eleanor. Let's do a discard and draw. We're going to keep that one on one because we want to get Agen to retarget. But we'll discard both of these and location markers. That's three of them. And then we will draw up to our full hand of six. Yep, so we have to draw five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we got some good ones. Obviously, location marker, that doesn't, that's no help. But second strike, roll after you, roll for an attack, re roll any one die. Very nice. Uh, melee pays one action the cost for you um, to enter or leave a striking area. Which striking area does have a cost there, so that'll be nice. Um, endure reduces play when heroes is about suffer wounds, suffer one fewer, so that's awesome. And deadly attack play when you um, declares an explosion attack plus two plus plus zero. So those are those are all really nice actually. So kind of got lucky on those. Okay, um, that's all of our actions. All right, if it's all of our actions, so um, we're gonna go and recover focus toughness and spend any. Um, retain costs, no, hostile close range. They do not, right? So they stay right here. Um, remove hostile vuln counters. There are not advanced game turn marker. You can finish your timer. <clears throat> G, um, guard roll, but I believe that's next turn. It shouldn't happen right away. Um, flip shadow counters. We're not hiding in shadows. Um, we'll flip our action counters. So I'll do that off camera and we'll start uh, this guard turn, beginning of the guard turns. Uh oh. And hopefully we can get into the mausoleum and start whooping some boss butt. All right, here we go. <clears throat> First of the guard turns. We're in the lair. We need to get to the mausoleum so we can go ahead and start kicking butt. Let's go ahead and as our first action, I don't have any movement ones, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. But let's do this. Whisper has two torches left. There's no use saving them, so we use them on the mausoleum. Mausoleum has a two entrance cost, so both these will reduce it to, well, technically zero. However, remember, Agen over here has a plus one entrance cost, so it's still going to cost one to move in, unfortunately. So, um, depending on who we have, you know, we'll see what happens. So let's do um, Whisper will spend in, actually, hang on a second, he doesn't have to, right? Because it's two, so it costs one to move in. Um, that's right. So um, he takes a move, or excuse me, uses an action for his move into the mausoleum. Also, and it goes to range zero, um, he... <clears throat> Has a one movement, so the movement cost is null nullified. Perfect. There we go. Yep. Herka will go ahead and move. She will move into range zero. However, she does have to pay the one movement cost, which we will discard the location marker for her. Colin spent an action to move, but he has a one movement, so he pays nothing else. Range zero. And finally, um, Eleanor will go ahead and move in as well, and she will have to pay because she has her movement. So... Mm. Oh, there's some, just some good, some good, God, I have some good cards here. Um, let's do deadly attack, I guess. Oh, man, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do deadly attack. I think I'm gonna have to spend a lot of these on to get into action, or to get into range anyway, which is unfortunate. So, all right, so let's move her there. Okay, so there we are. So we are there. Um, Whisper, let's do his free check for um, Hide and Shadows, which he will... Uh, should we use an XP for that? I don't think not because I don't really. Uh, we won't. Um, so he has a eight location grants a plus three. So he just has to roll five or higher. A two, even with the luck bonus, that won't help. So he does not get to hide in shadows, unfortunately. Um, maybe I should have done that. Oh well, too late now. Um, let's go ahead and Herka. Okay, so Herka does have a special ability. So two things you have to remember now. Herka, follower of Odin the Wise, has two abilities. Um, when she is, well, she's extra more than that, but these two abilities apply especially now. She will gain a plus two, plus one to her hand-to-hand -hand attack rolls while in the objective location. So now that she's there in objective, she's going to be, like, she's going to hit harder, hit better, I should say. Um, and she has Odin's Horn, power. When entering a location, divinity cost zero, and once per turn, twice total for adventure, you add, um, you get to roll four dice and get a total of actions based on success. Um, for every six, you gain an action. So we get to roll four dice. 
For every six, we gain an extra action. That's zero and one. So we get one extra action. That's that's awesome. Good job. Good roll in there. My God. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it here to show that um, anyone can use it. So one bonus action. Great. What a what a joke. Um, and then it did not cost. Basically, it's a reaction, so it does not cost an action to do. Okay, um, so that's one bonus action, which is better than nothing, I guess. Let's go ahead and it's gonna cost. Let's do this. Let's move Eleanor into striking range. Eleanor. So we're gonna play the melee card, pay one action at the cost to enter the striking area. So Eleanor will move into striking range. Um, this does obviously cause reaction, sorry, hostile reaction. Um, let's go ahead and have this enemy, the skeletal swordsman attack, is gonna attack Colin. Um, he has a, what is any bonuses to hit? He does swarm, plus two. Really swarms, that's crazy. Why would they swarm? They're not like rats, but whatever. Um, so that's plus two if there's two of them targeting, which there is, mm, there is, yep, right here. So let's go ahead and move these around a little bit. Whoop, whoop. Remember my little, just mnemonic, just to help me remember, kind of be like, oh, hey, look. So, yep, twos, threes, and fours are all going to get, okay. So he does it a plus two to hit on, thanks to the swarm, he needs to get eight, eight or higher to hit. So he needs to roll at least a six to hit. It's a ten. Ten plus two is, oh, is twelve. Um, it does defeat my cover. It gets a 12, which a 12 causes two wounds. Yikes. So what we'll do is we'll use our toughness, and then we'll take a wound. Uh, no, we'll use our armor. Try to absorb with the armor. That does absorb one. So now the sturdiness of our old channel armor drops from a 4 to a 3. Slightly less effective. Takes a hit from a skeletal swordsman. Okay, now Eleanor is going to go ahead and use her attack. She is going to use an action and then use both of her focus to cast Fire Hands. Um, as usual, two dice, plus we're gonna spend a XP, of course, to get a third die. Now we're gonna attack the Skeletal Swordsman, six or higher, however, they're weak to fire, get a plus two against fire, therefore, or against fire, get a plus two roll, so that's only gonna hit, it's gonna hit on fours, so fours or higher are hit, Skeletal Swordsman. One, two hits, the one, just nothing there, huh? Couldn't have three. Just can only manage two at a time. Hey, I'll still take it. So two of them are um, eliminated, which let's get rid of, obviously, one targeting me. Eleanor, she's weakest. And then probably Whisper as well. Mm. Or Colin. Colin, probably. No, no, Whisper. I'm sorry. Whisper, we want to get rid of We don't want Whisper getting hit, especially the Swarm, too. So let's get rid of... Let's get rid of that as well. Okay. Okay, and that is, by the way, fodder. There's fodder keyword in a mausoleum, so that is two experience for Eleanor here. Good job, girl. That was cause a hostile reaction, of course, so let's go ahead and have another hit. Um, this time it'll happen, well, let's do it on Colin as well. Um, they have the swarm still, so that is the plus two which is plus two, and that's so they just need to roll, what, a six? Six to hit on. They did not, they missed. They did defeat the cover, though. So they missed the hit, but they defeated cover. Therefore, all Colin is come fallen. That'll be the first of many volumes to follow. Okay. Mm. All right, let's go ahead and... Dun, dun, dun. Colin starts swinging. Actually, Herka's gonna start swinging. So Herka will swing. Um, she has, remember, because she's in the objective, she gets a plus two, plus one, no other bonuses, but she's, she's a six and minus one with the standard with the old mace. So she's, she hits on a four, a four, and then what's their cover? One, minus one, but then plus one, so any number hits. So you get a four higher, yep, and they have no other. So just a four higher. That's not a hit. I will use second strike to reroll my attack die. Seven, that is a hit. So we go ahead and let's eliminate one of these threes. One of the attacking Herka. Yeah, let's do that. Boom, so she gets, she gets an experience points for fodder and she gets two divinity 
for the I can find true divinity. Let's do this. Let's just take that two away and put the four here. Well, make change. All right, beautiful. And the one XP. Very nice. Okay. And now there'll be a hostile reaction, of course. So we'll do um, the three. Yeah, three. So against Herka. We'll go ahead and attack Herka. Um, no swarm, though, anymore. Uh, two is swarm, but none, nothing against Herka. So no plus two. So it's just a straight die roll. They need at least an eight to hit. We got an eight that did get a hit. Um, so and then pass and defeat the cover. So Herka would suffer a wound. I'm gonna go ahead and play the mm, no, I'll save it for save it for Eleanor. Uh shoot, I know. I'm like, oh, should I use it in Eleanor or not? <sighs> yeah, let's do that. Let's use it now. So we'll use the endure so it takes so she'll take no wounds. Herka will take no wounds. Alright, and let's do Colin. We'll do Oh man, Herco wasn't in. Oh no, she wasn't in uh, striking range. I wouldn't be able to do that attack. Oops. Okay, well, that was an attack that she. So technically, there was one that was left over, or there should have been there. Uh, my bad. Um, it mistakes happen, guys. Um, especially when filming videos. Um, so what we're gonna do then? We gotta get everyone closer. I don't know. I think I don't know if all they've been they've all been swinging or not. Oh, the striking ring range zero thing. I can. It does throw me off occasionally obviously. Um, so let's just go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and just start moving people up, right? So Colin, we'll go ahead and move up uh, into striking range, which does cause a hostile reaction. Um, oh, and it does take, it takes an action to do. Yep, that's what it is, because it takes an action. Not a card, but an action. So use his action for that. Um, and then it will cause a hostile reaction to him. Yep. So we'll have the four here. He will go ahead and attack. I'll, uh, I'll whisper. No bonuses, so just a straight die roll. He needs at least an eight to hit. That's a cock die. Does defeat to cover, and he got an eight. So he did, does get a hit, does cause a wound. I have no cards to mitigate, unfortunately. So it does cause a wound on all Whisper up here. Not good. Um, and then let's go ahead and do uh, Whisper. We'll go ahead and spend an action to move into... Um, Move into striking range. Yeah, bummer if I missed that. It was outside of range anyway. Oh, well, whatever. Too late now. Um, so which will cause a reaction here, which we'll go ahead and have Agen go ahead and he's going to get both of them. So use the attack against Eleanor right now. So attack against Eleanor. Let's see. Anything bonuses. Attack two versus range zero to one. And he is in range. Striking range. So no plus two. So it's just going to be a straight die roll. He has full health. So it'll take at least an eight to hit. Eight three, um, so it's a hit, and then it's a vuln for one round, and then that defeats the cover, so that's also a vuln, I believe. I think it causes two vuln, so it's like vuln, but then one's a temporary vuln, it goes away. So, and now I'm all out of actions anyway, so now he needs to go again, and he's targeting for his main attack, targeting Whisper, poor Whisper up there. Yikes! Oh god. All right, and no bonuses against Whisper. Just straight die roll, right? Yep. Seven, thankfully. So one Vuln, one Vuln. So one, and then a temporary one, which will fade. I don't know if there's a marker for temporary ones. I'm not sure. Put them like that so you know they're temporary. Okay, because that's it. I have no other actions. Yep. So end of game turn. Recover, focus, luck, toughness. Look, uh, we get our toughness for Colin here. Um, tank cost, hostiles close range, no. Remove hostile bone counters, they don't have any. Um, advanced adventure. Okay, so now we are here. We're on the guard, so now we're gonna have a guard roll. So we roll a 1d10, check this chart here. What I like to do is just put a one there to show. So five, so it's five to eight, we're gonna put a, let's put a little wound marker there. Show we got a, we got a guard possibly coming. Um, entire guard roll, flip shadow counters. Well, he was in, it wasn't in shadows anyway. Flip the action counters and remove the temporary counters. Remember, these two vulns are only for one round. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip everything over, and we'll start the next round. All right, starting off, let's, for our free action, let's do Whisper, do his roll. We'll spend an XP to Whisper and try to hide in shadows. Um, he gets a 6+, plus, and then the bonus for the area is 3, so he's to roll a 3 or higher. 
Should be easy. <laughs> Three. Well, it wasn't easy, but he did it. So he's now hiding in shadows, which is very nice. Um, that was a free action. Cause it does not cause a hostile reaction. Let's go ahead. Speaking of actions here. Oh, wait. And uh, Eleanor got a focus back. I missed that. Um, remember, because during that upkeep, during the end of game turn, recover a focus, a luck, and a toughness if necessary. She just was always at max focus, so it never mattered, but she does get one back now. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and... Dun, dun, dun. What are we thinking? Eleanor? Yeah, she's just so powerful, like with that ability. So let's go. Eleanor is going to do her fire hands. So spend an action. And she spend two actions. Would it be two focus? She doesn't have two focus or four XP. Ooh, how much do I got? Two, three, four. So I spend all my XP and do. No, oh, because I won't be able to do it again, though, anyway. So we'll just go ahead and do this. Oh, wait. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and do both our actions. So pay for fire hand. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure, you know, best option here. You got to kind of min-max a little bit here in this game or else you're going to get your butt kicked. Um, and then we will do against... Um, we're going to spend the XP, of course, to get three of them. Up gun it. And obviously I'm targeting Skeletal Swordsman. And it's they're against weakness against fire, plus two. So we just hit on four higher. Four higher, four higher. Get three of them. Get three of them. One, two, three. Boom. Big explosion, fire hands engulfing these skeletal swords, and they are damn near taken out. Not quite yet, but close. One, two, three. Get rid of them, and that is three XP. Um, very nice indeed. Tons of XP. I can definitely start using XP here, or keep using, I should say. Okay, um, that'll be cost our reaction, of course. Skeletal swordsman is going to attack Colin. He has a plus two. It's not swarming anymore, so just the plus two plus one. Needs a what is it? It'll be a six to hit. A ten. This is a ten. And he defeats cover. Ten is one wound. Colin will go ahead and discard his toughness for that. No worries. And then let's go ahead and get um, whispers close enough. Whispers in shadows. Whispers using an attack. He's going to attack um, skeletal swordsman. Because he's in shadow, he gets, what is it, a plus, plus two, plus one, hand to hand. He needs a nine to hit, so seven. At least a seven. Come on, baby, just a seven. Ten. Bam. That's a hit. Defeats cover. All that good stuff. So, boom. Skeletal Swordsman is eliminated. Um, we get one XP for old Whisper over here. I'm all excited. I'm throwing stuff around here. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Eliminate him, we get three copper. Just technically two silver, or it's one silver and a copper, because it's two to two, right? It's two silver and a gold, two copper and a silver. So, right there, silver, gold. Ooh, we're getting some treasure. Nothing else, no bonuses, anything like that. But the nice thing is, no, I'm, and we get five XP for beating him. The nice thing is, He's running out of XP here. All right, who? Oh, that's Whisper. Let's see, put that at two. So he needs four more. Three, four. Um, because, so it does stay, I'm going to leave it here. I'm just going to mark, put it up here because the guards are going to be more of them. It's going to be, I think, two more of them. It says on the back. Uh, guardsmen, two swordsmen. Yeah, so we'll leave that nearby just in case we get encounter guards. But for now, the big boss is wide open. Um. Speaking of which, I think that that's it though, right? So we got this, 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 I'm trying to think. Um, and then that wasn't Herka did it. No, that was actually Whisper. So now Agen is going to go. So he's going to go ahead and have him and have him attack um, Eleanor, which is risky, but I'm going to have him have him do it. Neither one is a good option. That's why I need to do this one on one here. Um, let's see, hits on a two, no pluses and pluses other than. She is vulned. So plus two to his roll. Plus two, plus one. Feeds cover. Oh no, a 12. So 12 is two wounds. <clears throat> so two wounds. What we'll do is we're going to use minor deflect, which will take an XP. Easy. No problem. Um, we're going to roll to see how many wounds. Minor deflect. Um, higher the better. So let's see. A seven. Eight, nine, no matter what, it's going to be one here. So that'll be one if we added the plus. So that'll be one. Uh, 
that's all done. We'll take one wound. Okay. We'll play one on one, by the way, targeting Aiken. So remember, play when you or any hero, so we have to spend a XP for that, no problem. Declares a non-explosion attack on a hostile card. Colin is going to attack Aiken here. Um, add plus one, plus one to all heroes' attacks against a hostile card. Um, add plus one, plus one to all heroes' attacks against that hostile card until the end of the turn. After the attack, retarget all hostile attacks on that hostile card to target the hero. So basically, it's like aggroing, right? Like getting everybody to attack Colin, or well, getting Aiken too. So um, I'm going to attack. All the heroes attacks and has stuff at the end of the turn, which is pretty nice. Okay, so plus one, plus one. Um, so Colin is going to attack with a plus one, plus one. He has his standard. He will use a skillful on his sword, which will cost an XP. Gives a plus one as well. Actually, costs two XP. Um, but he gives a plus one. So he has a plus one. He has a natural plus one as well. So that's a total of plus two because this card plus three. Plus three and plus two on the penetration. So the penetration's got automatically hit. So he says plus three on a roll. He needs to roll, what, a seven? So we need at least a four. Four to hit him. Four to hit him. Five. So we do get a hit on him. So you got one wound on old Egan over here. Uh, where is it at? There we go. Remember, he has five health. So one wound. Um, I believe fodder, though, is when you eliminate him, not when you just hit him. So, um... Yeah. Now he will act though. He has one attack. He'll attack Whisper. Or Whisper up there. And Whisper does have plus two against him. So my bonus is just going to be plus two. So that's a seven. Oops, that was a seven with the bonus. Seven, and then he defeats the cover. A seven is Vuln for one round. So he takes double Vulns basically. He takes a temporary Vuln, and then he takes a real one. So that is all of his abilities here have been used up. So let's go ahead and do Herka. Actually, Whisper will go ahead and attack. Or should do a phone, try to get rid of a phone. Uh, no, we don't need to do that. He'll just attack. He needs a, because he's in shadows, he gets a plus two, plus one. So he needs a, nice, he needs a seven. That's a miss, unfortunately, but it is a Vuln. He is slightly easier to hit. And now we'll do Herka. We'll get an attack off. Herka will attack with her mace. And she'll use 2 XP to make it a... Uh, let's see. So we need 1 XP back. To make it a skillful attack. So give it a plus 1. So plus 1. And then he's Vuln. So plus 2, plus 3. She's roll a 3 or higher. 5. That's a hit. So he will take another wound. Got two wounds on him and oh i forgot actually forgot her bonus to hit but no need plus you gain two divinity for each wound you inflict with a hand-to-hand -hand attack so she goes in. okay boom all right and then her she will attack again because too nice of a bonus so again a plus two um and the, and the plus one from there Jeez, two three four five she just needs a six so as long as she rolls a one it's fine yeah, if we spend if we do skillful so we'll do skillful so we use 2xp and so she just literally hits no matter what boom that's a hit cause another wound again is down to two health oh man <laughs> we can do it we can do it um and then colin has a hit attack left so he'll use his attack he's not gonna finish him off i don't think but that's okay um skillful so he will have a plus two we we'll use skillful so we we'll use 2xp That'll give him to plus three. So plus three, plus four. So two, three, four. Total plus four, and he just needs a seven to hit, so he just needs a three or higher. It's a six, that's a hit. So that is, where's the four? I'll just put another one on there. So four, he is down to one. So his attacks are gonna be stronger, which will happen in the start of next turn, unfortunately. Okay, oh my gosh. All right, that is the end, All right? Let's do the end of game turn. Cover focus, luck, toughness. So we get that toughness back for Colin. He'll probably need that. Um, we get the focus, one focus back. So beautiful. Eleanor has two focus. And remember, one on one, um, we target all hostile attacks to, um, and this was Colin we were picking. So Colin, who is number two. So it'll be Colin. 
there. And then I just have to find a number two on here. Oh, to show that now it's all on, all on the Colin right now. Okay, um, so discard that. And then what else was it? Um, real hostile bone counters. Oh, so not bone anymore. Advance the turn marker, which we can. It's on guard. So now we will do a, um, what you do is, oh, hostiles close range, including guards. So here guards move down to the nine plus. He's one away. And then we're gonna do a roll on the guard counter. Eight. So put another little token on there just to show guards are also coming there. So guards are coming, guards are coming, but they're not there yet. And they won't be next turn. All right, I'm gonna flip over all the action counters, but I'll take care of that uh, off camera. Let's see what we can finish them off next round. Okay, start of the final turn. By the way, and I realize this, um, that her is, one, is still in range zero, and I think I did two attacks with her. So technically, um, and just to sort of like make it a little more fair, um, before everything else happens, I'm gonna go ahead and spend an action to move her closer <laughs> to get that out of the way. Um, and then actually I'm gonna have, so then it causes a reaction here, which is fine. Um, have him attack Colin. I know I just want to get out of the way. That's a little bad that I've been like missing that like twice, three times now. So we'll do that. Um, and then which that is probably hit. So hang on six and four Colin. So six, seven, eight, that is still just the Vuln for one round. So, and defeats the cover. I wonder if that, I don't know if that stacks. I'm just going to say it does. So I'm going to say it stacks like that. Um, that was against Colin. Um, and then I'm going to, um, yeah, so that's, I basically call it that's moving up, making sure she's moved up. Technically, I still got a couple, like, free attacks at, or one, whatever, she shouldn't have been ranged for. Oh, well, too bad. Um, let's go ahead and, although we're going to finish, we're going to finish him off. All I have to do is get one hit on him. Let's check for Whisper. So let's spend an XP, top gun his shadows, see if we can hide in shadows. He needs a three plus. That's an eight. He successfully hides in shadows. Perfect which was already on that, it looks like. Um, hmm, yeah. Let's do, who should try to finish off the egg and the big bad? Should we do Eleanor? Let's do Eleanor. She's gonna use both her actions, do the fire hands. She gets a plus two, she has two dice. We're gonna up gun it to three, of course. So she gets three attacks, just has to hit on a four or higher because he is uh, weak to fire. That is only one hit, only one hit. But unfortunately for poor old, um, poor old Agen, it's all he wrote, um, all he wrote there. So three, four, five, finished off, no health left. Agen is defeated, um, we get two copper. I do think though that other attack because his health was low, it actually should have been, because what did I roll, an eight? With the bonus, which an eight there would have been one and attract the guards, which moved him down, which would have created two skeletal swordsmen. Um, but I'm not gonna do that because it's my game and I'm not gonna extend this game any longer. So we have defeated Agen. We have cleared the damn book crypts with only slight fudging of die rolls and rules as far as I'm concerned. Deal with it. Silver, it's two copper, but I'm gonna count it as a silver. Is our treasure for defeating old Agen here. Get him out of here. Big Bad's defeated. Oh, no. We have cleared the mausoleum, cleared the crypt, and we will return to town victorious. Um, along with that, we, so we finished, we got that treasure, um, and then we would get those four hero points for clearing the crypt here, right? For clearing this adventure, which we could spend, say, maybe Eleanor. She's level one, takes three, maybe bump her up to level two, and then we have one left, maybe give it to Herka. Herka could go to level two also with one. So we could have two level twos and then two level ones going into our next adventure. But we're not playing campaign. That was just a one-off. I think that was everything. Yeah, you guys got to see Warfighter Fantasy in action. A few rules mistakes, forgetting a couple things. It's going to happen. Um, I was watching a playthrough by someone who wrote this rule book, And he made a few mistakes like that, so... It's going to happen, but that's okay. Um, it's a learning. Just remember those things, right? Sometimes it's easy to forget. Okay, you know, are you in, which range are you in? Keep track of it here, but at the same time, you may be in the excitement of rolling. Forget where you, your, that particular hero is. Just double check. Um, they'll check, you know, costs of entering striking range, entering locations, uh, what cards you have, things like that. Other than that, though, I think it went pretty dang well. 
and this warfighter fantasy i hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough i sure enjoyed it um, my heroes kick butt I'd, I'd say even without my uh, <clears throat> pop favoring them a little bit here and there, I probably would have defeated old Agen anyway. I would just say he did not stand a chance against Eleanor the Wizard, Colin the Fighter, Herc of the Cleric, and Whisper the Thief. If you guys made it this far, I would appreciate a subscription to the channel. It's free. Just click the button. Um, also, a thumbs up. And also, just comment. Let me know. Do you like the video? Do you like the game? What do you think? you want some more videos on this game? I'm thinking do at least one more playthrough. <gasps> Let me know below. Otherwise, until next time, everybody. Later.